talk about uh, our use of GitLab uh, in the of, of GitLab <coughs> so, uh, in the education team at Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm not going to be sort of teaching you how to use GitLab as such, but I'm just going to go through the concepts and the steps that are involved and show you how uh, how accessible and how easy it is to get started with this. Um, so just a quick introduction. Uh, this is me. Um, these are some things that I like. Uh, I'm not from around here, as, as we say where I'm from. Uh, I'm from a little place um, called the North. <coughs> uh, some of you might have heard of it. Um, so I'm really into coding and, um, and computing and all these things. Uh, really into free software and Linux and the whole open source uh, eco ecosystem. And uh, I really like car things as well. Uh, so, so what is GitHub? So GitHub's a, a website. It's a bit like a social network for code projects. So it's kind of like you have a profile and you, you know you have a user on there and you're you know there are other users you interact with and you collaborate on on projects and you all commit code and commit changes to projects uh, you know to to this website. This is a, it's like a, it's not just a website. It's a it's a web service. Um, so you can use this offline and offline, uh, online and offline. You can use GitHub's web interface to directly view and browse projects. Uh, you know, it's not always about code. Sometimes it's documentation and, and actual text, and it's a really good way of using Git, the actual version control behind all of this, um, as you know, to manage your changes through through a project, whether it's code or whether it's documentation or or even things like legal docu documents, because you can actually. Um, document the changes as they occur and who made that change, why they made the change, and that kind of thing. And it lets people to use um, to all collaborate on the project uh, in a distributed fashion. So this is what this is this is pointing out. So lots of people working on the project separately, uh, and then they feed into this kind of master uh, copy on 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 GitHub. Um, so how do we use GitHub? So this is our website. You might uh, recognize if you've been on it the last few months. Um, so on the resources, if you click on the resources tab on the uh, on the website there, this is raspberrypi.org. Uh, on the resources tab, you've got we've got teach, learn, and make the three kind of categories of the resources that we that we put out. Uh, and then each of these is a resource. So if you go into one of these, you'll see the, the specific ones. This is just a selection of them all. Um, and if you if you look uh, down the bottom of one of these, you'll so I'll get back to that in a sec. Uh, but at the bottom of these, you'll see that it links off to the respective GitHub page. So we write we write the materials and put them on GitHub here. So this is an example of a workshop, uh, sort of a, one of the resources, push button, stop motion, and this is how it is rendered on the website. So when you click on that kind of when you click on one of these, you get shown this kind of worksheet view. Um, but this is where the actual project lives. Uh, it's on GitHub. So myself and the other members of the team, we write these together. Um, you know, usually it's just kind of one person leading it, but we have co collaboration and we work together, sort of improving it and, uh, and working towards the sort of finished copy. And then once it's live, the changes can get made. Uh, if you have any, if everyone has any issues, they can we can get them fixed and that kind of thing. But it lives on GitHub, but it's rendered on here on our website. So I just want to sort of talk about how, how you can contribute to this. So if you're, uh, so this is you know this is what we're kind of aiming towards. You know, you, you being able to do this, you know, fix all the bugs and commit that and send those to us. So first of all, you you sign up to GitHub. That's that's the um, you know this is what I was talking about when you know you have a user account on here, you have an identity on here. Um, so you just sign up to GitHub and it's free to use. Uh, so on our resources, this is what I'm referring to. At the bottom of any of the worksheets, you'll see this this little icon. This is the GitHub logo, and you can just click on click on this link here, and that will take you directly to the respective page on GitHub. So you don't have to go go and find it. But if you want to sort of browse them all, you can also see them on our. We have a GitHub organization, so this is a bit like a, uh, a sort of grouping of um, different users. So we we keep our learning resources in this repository here. Uh, in this sorry in this organization here and each of these links here this is these are the different repositories which are the code projects um, and e each of these is, is a respective resource on the website so you can find them this way as well uh, you can find one and click on there and then you can get through to <coughs> to the project itself so 
One way to contribute is a really helpful thing. Uh, if you're going through the worksheet, for instance, if you're a teacher or if you're uh, you know, somebody who's using this to learn for themselves or you're just you know, a community member who's, who's just going through like, learning new things and you find an issue, if there's a problem with one of the, uh, the instructions or a problem with you know, some, um, so any sort of issue, whether it's a bug in the code or a, you know, a, a, the wording of some of the, um, some of the material, if there's any problem, you find an issue. So once you're on GitHub, you can just open an issue against the repository, and then the author gets a notification saying, you've had a new issue, and it'll read the, read the title, they can go and check this out. And then from there, you can, have a, you can have a conversation with us over what the issue is. So if you do your best to describe what your problem is, you know, if you say there's a typo on this line, or this line of code doesn't work the way that you described it, or you've left this instruction in, um, you know, you, you've removed the bit that you actually, you know, referred to that code. Some, anything like that. Any, any sort of issue. Uh, it's not, you know, not explained well enough or anything. Just tell us about it by filing an issue like this. Uh, and it's just a simple text box. You submit that and it goes through. And then we'll, you'll receive a notification if, you know, if somebody responds to that. Uh, another thing you could do is actually directly edit the, the version on, you know, uh, on GitHub. Now, this is not like Wikipedia. You're not going to break our website by, you know, being able to, you know, you can't just edit this and the, the master, you know, on, on the website will get changed straight away. It's a kind of a, it's, it comes to us for review, essentially. But you can actually edit this for your own purposes. So when you click the edit button there, so when, you, when you're viewing a file in a, in a repository, so I'm reading the readme file, which is the, the sort of index, the, the landing sort of cover page. Um, if you just view that page, and click edit, uh, it will effectively do this. This is a, a concept in, in Git and in GitHub called forking. So it's where you fork a project off into a different direction. Uh, I mean, there, there, are, there are cases for forking where it goes in a different way and, and, and the two repositories go, uh, you know, go their, their two different ways. Uh, but sometimes they sort of merge back and you merge the changes back into the original one. And that's sort of what I'm referring to here. So when you click edit, it will take you directly to this stage. You didn't have to learn about forking or anything. It, it does all that automatically for you. Uh, so, so that original repository belonged to Raspberry Pi Learning. And when I clicked edit, it took me to, it created a new repository called, with the same name, but under, under my username. So it's like created a copy in, under my username, and I can edit that version. And then the idea is that I would recommend that Raspberry Pi took the changes that I made to my copy and applied them to their own. So in this case, I'm a normal user who's not in the organization and I'm, uh, I'm just doing this you know, from, from the outside, if you like. And you get this edit screen and you can just edit, edit directly the, the, the code. So if I wanted to add a line into there, there's a few bullet points. This is, um, this is just very, very basic text markup language uh, called Markdown. So it's just you, it's it's as easy to write as you you know as it is to read. So you just you can pick up basically how it works. So if you wanted to add a bullet point there, you would just add a new line with a dash at the, at the beginning there. Uh, and if you just wanted to change the text or fix a typo, there's no learning required to be able to do this. Uh, so you make your changes, and then you you're faced with see at the bottom at the bottom here. This is what I'm referring to. So at the bottom underneath the editor. You get a uh, commit changes uh, form to fill it. So you just have to you just have to say here what the change is, what 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 is the change, and, and you, you put this in the form of uh, like a patch, like a request. So it's describing what your change does. So you know this is a bit a bit of a daft one, but you know fix all the bugs. This is what this change does. So would you like to apply, would we like to apply the patch that fixes all the bugs? And then we have you know we have that in our history of how things were changed. Uh, and so at this point, so I've committed that. So my, my version has a slightly different history from the original copy's history. Because it doesn't, the, the original one doesn't have my change in it. So I've got one extra commit that theirs doesn't have. So at this point, GitHub is aware that, I, that, the, that the paths have diverged. And it's given me the option to create a pull request. So a pull request is, is where the user who's made the changes requests that the original repository merges their changes in. And it gives you a great, great big button here. As soon as the, you know, it's aware of there being a divergence, it gives you the option to 
and make that request. So all you do is click this button. And it shows, oh, sorry, but, you know, on this screen, it, it gives you a kind of a, before you create the pull request, it kind of gives you an, an overview of what the changes are and what, you know, what it is that your requesting gets moved over. So here it's saying there's one commit, which was on the 16th of June. Uh, that's the author who made the commit. That's the commit message. Uh, and it's just giving me an overview here. So there's one contributor, one commit, one file changed. And this, and then it actually lists all the files that have been changed. So you can actually view the changes. And here it gives you a nice rendered view saying, you know, this is all I did. I just added a line beneath the title saying test edit. So the green there indicates that it's an addition. If I had deleted a line, it would be in red and it would show it crossed out. So you can kind of visualize what the change is just to make sure you know what it is that you're submitting. And then you click that green button and then it goes over to us and we have the option now to kind of communicate with you and say, okay, well, you know, have you thought about this or, you know, uh, and we can actually test out your, your version before, you know, before merging it over. So I can, because I can browse yours, because it lives in your area. So I could go to yours and run through the instructions myself and make sure that the changes that you've made are acceptable. Uh, sometimes, um, I mean, it's, it, there, there are also cases where uh, if you, you make changes just for your own purposes, you don't necessarily need to file them back. So another thing I haven't really point, uh, pointed on here is that the, um, the, the license of all of our resources allows you to do this. So you can take our, our copy, change it, and use it for your own purposes. And it's licensed under a Creative Commons license, which is a kind of a, uh, a sort of method of copywriting something, but in, a, in the opposite sort of sense, in terms of we're giving you permission to use this. Because we're an educational charity, we want people using our resources. We want them not to be constrained by any copyright or any uh, legal, you know, um, uh, legal sort of uh, protection saying that you know you're not allowed to use it, you're not allowed to photocopy, you're not allowed to share it, you're not allowed to change it. We don't want to put any restrictions on the way they're used in education. If you're a teacher and you think this is a really good idea for a resource but I want to extend it, I want to add some steps or I want to explain these steps more uh, or I want to you know remove the bit about you know I want to remove this step because I feel it's unnecessary for what I'm trying to teach. You can do whatever you like. Um, and you know, one way, one easy way, if you could, if you take a look at GitHub, is to actually edit and have have a uh, have an account on GitHub and have your version of our resources on there. That might be one way that you'll you'll find uh, and uh, you'll find useful. And some of the teachers that we've trained um, at Pike Academy, that our sort of free CPD for teachers, uh, is that some of them are actually using this and they're actually setting their own assignments on GitHub as well. So they have their students. Um, have accounts on here and they assign the work and then they can send the work in and then the, the whole sort of ongoing marking process kind of goes back to them like that. Um, so GitHub's great for collaborative work and requesting changes and managing the evolution of a project, whether it's code or documentation or or in our case, you know, learning materials. Uh, but it's also great a great way to kind of broadcast what it is that you're doing and share with other people the methods you're using and and how and how the interactivity of bringing people together kind of allows you to to progress so if you you know if if, if, if you're not sharing sort of what you're doing you're just keeping it to yourself there's no sort of outside influence and no no way that you can kind of you know move forward and and, and, and receive uh, uh, receive tips from other people. So this is a really good way of kind of networking <coughs> and showing showing people what you're doing, and inviting in, um, inviting in influence. So uh, if you want to check out our resources, they're they're all on the Raspberry Pi website, uh, and you can check them out through GitHub as well. I, I would love to see some. Um, you go through some of those resources, uh, open issues, edit, make edits and fork, and make your own. You know, do do what you whatever whatever you want to do with your own resources. And basically any other feedback you have about our resources or the website or anything like that, either find them on GitHub or email us or come and speak to me. I'd love to um, know what people are using them for. So that's about it. Thank you.
Thank you, President. Yes, I'll take questions. So it, it's both resources provided by the Raspberry Pi org you know, yeah. foundation and anyone else's. Yeah, so we do, have do a... You deliver, do you say <coughs> these ones are the foundation's resources and these ones are other people's resources? Have? So uh, at the moment, we the ones that are on our website are just the ones that we've made. Uh, there, there, are, there are a couple that have been inspired by, you know, sort of the start of somebody else's project, and we've kind of taken that as long as the license for it, you know, allows it. Taken that and it kind of expanded it in our own way, or used it in our own way. Um, you know, sort of always crediting where appropriate. Um, we do take submissions of new resources or existing resources from other people. Um, most of the <coughs> most of the things people are doing at the moment are published in a, in a way that doesn't lend itself directly to this. So we're kind of encouraging people to take a look at this as a good way of starting. Um, so if people are writing resources and all, all materials that are, and you know, they just put a PDF on their website, for instance, it's hard for us to actually take that and to use it in this way. Uh, we, we're looking at uh, different ways that we can accept proposals rather than just, oh, here's my finished project, you know, what, you know stick this on the website when you're ready. I'd rather kind of open up to proposals and say, I'd like, I've got this an idea for a resource, I'd like to do this. Um, I've got some materials that, you know, kind of get started and I'd like to develop these further, would you be interested? And kind of have a proposal submission process, so we're going to be opening that up soon. We've also got a, um, a repository in, inside the Resident High Learning, which is, um, which shows you how to use GitHub technically and, and actually how to, how to work <coughs> the way that we do. Um, that's just a, a present by learning slash creating resources. So uh, if, you, if you check that out, you can see kind of how we how we do this and how you can do it yourselves. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, what other what can't you do with it? Like videos. What what other limits? You you mentioned one or two, but like PDFs. What other limits are there? Well, I mean you, you can do, I mean you can do PDFs uh, to a certain extent. I mean you could you could upload files to a repository. So you've not necessarily written them in there, and the, the changes can't be managed in the same way. Because if you download the PDF, or you know, also you, um, you know, if you made it in Word, for instance, then you publish as a PDF. Um, the the new version wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily be able to see the changes as such, but you, you know, you could generally do that, uh, just uploading them and then linking to the PDFs in the in the Markdown file. Um, but uh, what you can't you do? So you can embed pictures. Um, you can you can do certain things to kind of extend the markdown a little bit further by embedding uh, videos in there, that kind of thing. Um, and it really kind of depends on what way where you're going with it next. So if it's going on our website, then there's the kind of you know it's just in that template, and there's a certain sort of style as to you know to what you. I mean, you can put code blocks and things. So there, that's a really kind of accompanying. Um, you know, you could put a section of code and it'll all be syntax highlighted. Um, and you can have accompanying files, so you can say, oh, you know, type this out or type this out, or you can download the whole copy of the file with this command, or download it, you know, right click and save this file here. Um, and, you know, if you have a whole set of accompanied sprites or something like that for a scratch game, or, or you know, anything like that, or little lab files for a, for a game or something, you can drop those in the repository as well. Uh, just, it's just, it is just a folder because it sort of extends from, from Git to the, the learning control technology. So it's just a just a folder containing metadata about which files have changed. So I mean, Markdown makes it very simple, just to you know, because it, uh, the majority of it is just text based with code blocks inside. So it really lends itself well to that. Can I just add yep. a second? What's the fastest way to find something? Is it within, within its own search, or through Google search, or which way would you find the bits you want from that? Um, I mean, we, at the moment, we don't have so many resources on the website that you would not find what you're looking for. So just go, just go to our resources page and browsing through them, you'll, you'll get to the flavor of what, we, what we've got. Um, and we, we don't currently sort of link off to any other um, external resources written by other people, but that's something I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to look at doing as well. Um, so, I mean, there's the, there's a few community pages that we link up on our, on our community page on the website. There's some of those are you know would contain so like Alex um, Alex Eames's site for us by TV. 
it's not, I wouldn't necessarily say it was a, an educational resources site, it's a, it's a Raspberry Pi community blog and that kind of thing. Uh, but it does, it will contain, there, there is a lot of useful material contained within there if you, if you search within that. So it's kind of knowing which places to look at the moment. So you have a template already for people wanting to submit resources? Uh, so we, what do you mean by template? Uh, well, I mean, a template like GitHub template that, that would be used to submit resources in a form that's easy for you to. Uh, so we, yeah, so we have, it's, it's less a template, more of a, a guide. Yeah. So we, if you kind of look at one of ours, it's, it's, it's very, it's very simple. There's not, there's not really much, it's not like sort of filling in gaps. You would just start and, and go along the same way. Um, but yeah, if you follow the creating resources, um, guide which is on, on GitHub and you'll find links to it from, from the website. Um, that kind of teaches you all the all the concepts sort of how how to actually develop it up and gives you an introduction as to what to think about as you're as you're doing it. Okay. Any other questions? That's it. Yeah, all right. Thank you.